method of yoga, deep yoga, inbound yoga. There you find the priorities. And there you, you read certain books and then certain books you don't read them anymore. Then you read other books. Now Srima Bhagavatam I've been reading for 40 years and that book is always telling us the most important things and what we just wrote about the perfection of the yoga system. What is that perfection of the yoga? That which removes all the illusion from our life and establishes us in a healthy, wholesome way. If you want to gain entrance into the real world of yoga, you have to find somebody who is the perfect yogi. The perfect yogi is the person who is surrendered to Yogeshwara. Yogeshwara is the master of all yogis. He is the, he is the Lord himself, he is the Ishvara. Patanjali speaks of Ishvara. You have to do your Svadhyaya very carefully. You have to study the scriptures about it. Don't think that you can get all this information just by a few weeks of uh, making a few exercises and then you get a teacher certificate and you say, now I'm also a yoga teacher. Hmm? I'm studying this topic for 42 years and I'm feeling that I'm just getting to the entrance. It is such a vast field. Just like in love, you never feel that you love. In knowledge, you never feel that you really know. And then you face another problem. You forgot what you learned before. <laughs> but how much knowledge do you need? What is the essence of all this? This is really the most important question to ask. So the inbound school of yoga, the inbound yoga system, it is giving us a chance to become an, a member of that group of people who want to become instruments of divine love. <coughs> the instrument of divine love, yoga, it is really where everything you do has something to do with your connection with Ishwara. And you understand that Ishwara has come into my life by his own sweet will. There's some spontaneous attraction for the yoga principle in a person, most likely, but still only by the mercy of Ishwara can you come in contact with Yogeshwara and the Yoga Sutras, Ashtanga Yoga, they all point in this direction. But we have to also understand that of all the Yogas, the most ecstatic execution of con you commun communion is when we pray to the Holy Name. When we invoke the presence of Ishvara in our life to become an instrument of His. There's no yoga exercise comparable to that. Even if you do the most incredible and difficult yoga exercise, it has nothing to do with that intensive conclusion, that dedication. My Lord, let me be an instrument of your love. <coughs> and this is the whole conception of Vedic culture. Actually, Vedic culture has so many elements. For example, in the inbound yogas, uh, we study so many of the different areas of knowledge of the Vedas, which most yoga schools don't even touch upon, since they are not so 
so accessible to the people in the Western world. So, but for example, the chanting of the holy name, the kirtan, is something is very introductory. It is the best thing to start to get some taste, then to do some worship, to start offering your food, to making your food spiritualized. Very important. I mean, you are what you eat. Can you imagine somebody going with a dead chicken in his stomach is going for yoga? <laughs> it doesn't fit, you know. Huh? It's like, huh? so the archana is is re accepting your food as blessed food. Then yakyas to make offerings, to see your life as an offering, to to even see yoga as an offering, not a self-centered process. I'm not doing yoga just for my self-improvement. I'm doing yoga as an offering, as an expression of gratefulness to my universal creator who is providing me with everything. Now my yoga is a, is a, is a kind of an expression of my wanting to be connected with him. And then if there's anything else of special knowledges, where well, maybe comp complementary knowledges like the astrology, like Vastu Vidya, like Ayurveda. There's complementary things. They're also good for health, good for improving, but they're not the essence. Krishna didn't even mention uh, in the Bhagavad Gita uh, the importance of the different uh, physical conditionings of the Ayurveda system. So many things. Prabhupada also did mention so many things. But at the same time, if you read it in the Bhagavatam, you find everything. In the Bhagavatam, there's everything. <coughs> you see, yoga is not self-contradictory. Yoga is, is a complementary uh, it is compatible with all the different levels of sincere research. It has something to offer. It is uh, complementing each other with one step leads into the next and some of them uh, they make you jump over a few other steps. Like, for example, Parikrama is one of the steps of yoga, going to holy places, no? But then sometimes people can do that, and some people say, they have no time, they cannot do that. They can jump over this step. All these things are complementary in the yoga. In the yoga, and some people, you find some neophytes, and say, it's got to be this way, got to be this way, got to be this way. It's not that way. It's got to be the way, the path of the heart. It got to it got to go straight towards the truth, and don't go anywhere else. The Brahman is a servant of the truth. Brahmins also can be yoga teachers. As a matter of fact, yoga teachers should be Brahmins, and th so should be so should be the. Uh, The doctor, the Ayurveda doctor, he should be a Brahmin for sure. The Jyotish, the astrologer, he should be a yogi, he should be a Brahmin because he's going to read your chart, he's going to understand about some of your karmic implications, but now he's going to give you a life advice. If that life advice is not based on the truth of the teachings of yoga. If that's not so, then it will not be really good life advice. It will be some kind of a disaster. So therefore, <coughs> we are taking Brahmin, Brahminical life, the commitment of Gayatri, the Gayatri, Gaya means chanting, and tree is that which liberates us. So we are receiving this mantra when we want to serve. 
yoga is the entrance to the world of service, but not, not arbitrary service, no, concentrated service. If you're a doctor, you're a health service. If you are uh, a cook, you are uh, providing healthy sustenance for the body servant. Mm -hmm. Every service, everything in life has its particular <coughs> specific service application. And if you do something just for taking and not for giving, your service is not appreciated. Whatever you do in life for taking is not very boring. But if you do something for giving, it may be very entertaining. It may be very charming. So what you do for a living? Okay. You do things for a living. But what, do you, what is your mission? My mission is to fill my belly. Mm? Like some people say, I, do you live to eat or you eat to live? Mm? What is it really? Where is your yoga? Where is your intensity? What is that system of yoga which will provide you a true contact with Ishwara and becoming an instrument of his love? This is, this is the the path, like for example in the inbound yoga system we give an introduction to the Varna Ashrama system. We are introducing how people become servants in different <coughs> respects. We introduce them to the three, mod three modes of material nature to see whether how much they incline towards goodness, how much they incline towards passion and to ignorance, how to God control themselves, what are the dangers they, are, they will face on this path. Because the Vedic culture has actually been designed in such a way that through the prayers, through the behavior, through the uh, food, through the educational installations, installments, you get more and more powerful on your path to do the right. Not powerful to become an independent problem. You know, people in this world, power corrupts, <laughs> absolute power corrupts absolutely so. Do you think yoga is a power system to give you power and then to corrupt you? No. But it can happen. Some people, they gain lots of fame, notorious they are, and in this way they use it for themselves and forget about the Lord who has given them the call of yoga. That is a, a big misgiving when people think that I have become independent. Yoga has made me independent. Money has made me independent. Weapons have made me independent. Political power has made me independent. I am the most beautiful of all has made me independent. Remember Cassius Clay, I am the greatest. Just because he knocked somebody on the nose and he fell over. I mean, come on. Every, that's going on every time, everywhere in this world. And nobody's the greatest for hitting others anyway. He's, he's so dumb. This whole boxing is one of the most dumbest sports you can imagine. And so then somebody in that dumb sport declares, I am the greatest, and, and get a big applause. So the inbound yoga stu study is actually, you have to restudy life a little bit. You have to reset your values. You know, sometimes when the computers break down, everything is like upside down, the software is corrupted, virus have entered and everything, and the thing looks like totally hopeless. Then there's one last chance, it's called reset. Reset to the out, to the to the basic outgoing unit. Huh? Let's reset this thing. I mean, we may be losing some information here, but this thing is going nowhere. Reset. So this but this society today has to has to go and get to the reset button because it has gone so upside down. Everything confusing, corrupted. So if you want to adjust it, like you, you want to do what we call the psychology of imperfection. 
you enter into a turmoil, you, you find endless and endless problems and from one leads to another and so and so. So the, the whole idea of the Vedas is to teach us nitty gritty lead down to the root of our heart that we are servants and that we will be only happy when we serve. And that service is divided according to the ability. Like you said, the divisions of mankind were created according to the ability and the work of man. If you're a dentist, then don't clean other people's shoes. It's not that you cannot, you probably be a better shoe cleaner than anyone, but Sorry, if you're a dentist, there's a long line of people with big tooth pain. Now, if you're cleaning shoes, it's not going to help them. Anybody can clean shoes, but not anybody can clean and fix their teeth. So, in this way, pleasing. Everything has to be for pleasing the Lord. So, you, what's your talent? Okay, please the Lord this way. You know how to sing, please the, the Lord this way. If you don't know anything specific, then it's a little bit more difficult. But still, God is so merciful that only by your cry. You're crying, oh my Lord, I want to serve you somehow. Let me, let me be useful somewhere, somehow. And then immediately you will be rewarded and there will be some chance will be given to you. So, <coughs> the whole array of spiritual invocations we have in yoga, they, they are all teaching us. I'll give you an example. Om Shanti Om. There is no peace without the truth. People say Om Shanti, Om Shanti, yeah, but what, what does that mean? Have you ever thought about it? Om is the Supreme and Shanti is what it takes you to. So you have the Om Shanti Om is a very, very devotional invitation. <coughs> Even more Om Hari Om. Om Hari Om, there is no Hari without Om. <coughs> And who is Hari? Hari is the universal name of God. <coughs> it's found in many religions. You always found Hari, Eli, uh, even in the Aryans, no? famous Aryans. People think, oh, the Aryans, some silly Germans, they thought Aryans mean blonde hair and blue eyes. They are the Aryans, you know. But Aryan comes from Sanskrit. It means those who love Hari. The same word as Jewish. The word Jewish means those who are devotees of the Lord. And Hari means, the Aryans means those who are devotees of Hari. It's a, it's a description <coughs> of a certain type of behavior. <laughs> Not of a certain type of physical look. <laughs> it's crazy, you know. Uh, we know how crazy it is because anyone from anywhere can develop so many wonderful things just by association. So in this way, Om Hari Om is a very devotional invocation. And then what to speak if you chant uh, uh, mantras like Jaya Jagannath, which means Lord of the Universe, please protect me. Radhe Sham. This is already openly the divine couple. The divine couple is already there. Om Hari Om is also the divine couple. And Hari means the thief of the heart. He steals away your, your heart. So if you say, Hari, 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 please come and steal my heart. Just wait a moment and you'll be finished. <laughs> He'll steal it. He said, well, you, you invited me. You told me to steal your heart. Huh? Now I'm coming and you're complaining. So, this is like this, all the holy names, Gorani, Tai, Sita, Ram, they are all the upcoming uh, celebration of the greatest expression of gratefulness. And this is in the inbound yoga system, it is the two mantras, Maha Mantra and there is the Panchatattva Mantra. Panchatattva Mantra is the introduction, invocation of the divine devotional energy which manifests through, through five eternal truths. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadikura. 
So there is invocation through sound, healing through sound, and the meaning of the sound. We should not only go by the by the by the energetic influence, we should also go by understanding, comprehending what is really there, what is, where is it taking us, no? And for example, it takes us to behave properly. Behaving properly means karma kanda. Karma kanda or karma yoga. To behave in such a way that your behavior will be doing good to you and to others. So, in the Karma Yoga, Karma Yoga is, uh, is uh, explained in the, in the Bhagavad Gita as action in higher consciousness. And that also means, Karma Yoga means that you have accept that there's rules. Karma Yoga means there's laws and you're supposed to act according to the laws. The divinity is perceived as the law, the truth and love. So, as far as love is concerned, we know very little. But as far as truth is concerned, we know something and that truth is supposed to be put on front in order to find out what are the laws and how to behave properly. So, the avatars, especially the Manvantara avatars, are the teachers of the rules. That's why we have something, a book called Manu Sanghita, which we were reading a lot yesterday in our class about, about the real meaning. The real meaning of Manu Sanghita is love and respect, love and respect, love and respect, period. Anything contra con contradicting or contrary to this is interpolation or deviation or misinterpretation. The, 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 the scriptures say love and respect and submission to the reality. Hey, you should not submit yourself to some fictional illusion. What nonsense is this? You should submit yourself to reality because you are part of reality anyway. None of us can say, oh, and to become a Brahmin is a reality. If you want to become a Brahmin, only thing you have to do is say, yes, I want to serve you, my Lord. <coughs> Then you become a Brahmin. If you say, I don't want to serve you, my Lord, then you can get initiation, you're still not a Brahmin. In other words, the real thing is the substance. I want you to surrender to reality. I want you to be part of a positive, progressive reality. I want you to be a beaming light in the world which gives so much light to others that you yourself won't be in darkness either. <laughs> and this light, this light is not yours. You have to get it. It has to descend upon you. You just have to become an open agent of it. Let, let this light come into me and shine through me. I am nothing but you are all. I'm available. I'm at your disposal. <laughs> that's yoga, that is a gesture, that's it starts with Surya Namaskar. No? Please divine light come into me. Light up my life. Here's my respect. Viva Shwan, Surya Neva. Let my life be directed towards you in gratefulness and compassion. So all these different elements of the yoga pass. <coughs> they are not actually luxuries, they are actually necessities. But, in the essence, the details may be uh, ignored at certain points because of the state of the student's capacity. But, when the capacity of the student is larger, then he will be given more and more and more information. Otherwise you say, why? All this I have to study to do yoga? So many things. Oh. But actually it is the manual for those who really want to practice. Plus, there is another manual for those who are just beginners. But this is a manual for those who are instructors. So the instructor has to know more. He has to be very well prepared. 
And he will find out the more he reads, he will see, hey, this is a whole life. I thought I'm going to a yoga class, learning a few little things, maybe I can make a living with it, but uh, otherwise I don't want to live my normal life. No, yoga will not allow you to live any normal life, it will turn your life upside down and make you... a recipient of this divine love to contain it in yourself, in your existence, and then start sharing I wish I could invite all of you to have this beautiful experience of telling others about the message. I was just telling one uh, when he wrote it this morning that I didn't know what I was going to talk about today. And so what has to be talked about, what has to be put, brought to our attention is that there's something can flow through you. Yoga means to go into the flow, not opportunistically and much less opposition way. Let the divine flow come in you and through you. What means opposition? Is there any opposition to the truth? Factually not. You cannot oppose the truth. But you can go within the free will area of the truth, you can go into a different direction than which is the best for you, so that you learn out that this is useless. There's a lot of things like that. Actually, the Vedas, they do that all the time. They invite you, they say, hey, you want mystic powers? Yeah! How do I get them? Come over here. Like you do this and this and this. Now first of all, you stop this, you stop this, you stop this. Hey, hey, don't smoke. Don't, then you can't get mystic powers. That's right. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. You want mystic powers? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, do this, do that. <laughs> so they tell you this. And then you, wow, I'm going on my way to yoga. I'm getting some mystic powers. Then the yoga teacher comes, you know. He says, you know what's the value of mystic powers? Yeah, it's incredible. There's nothing. Do you mean all the things you taught me to get something? Now you say it was nothing. I don't understand you. You don't need to understand anything. Just keep working. Just keep working. Then the thing say, oh, I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. No more suffering. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the karma comes and says, oh, you want to go to heaven. That's very good. So, <coughs> now you prepare for heaven. You do these things, you do that thing. And like this, you go, wow, wow, wow. Now I'm getting ready. I have my ticket to heavy, uh, heaven ready almost. No? And then the, the teacher comes and says, so you want to go to heaven? Yes, I want to go to heaven. Yes, they say, only fools go to heaven. <laughs> please, please, my dear teacher, first you taught me for the last few months, you said me how I should prepare to go to heaven. And now you tell me only fools go to heaven. <laughs> too much for me. Why, you really want to learn something. You have to be ready for it. You have to be ready for things which you are not controlling and you are not in charge of them and you want to know? Then go. You don't want to go? Well, then no go. Nobody's obliged. It's only by invitation. And you have to beg for the invitation. In this way, oh! Heaven, why not heaven? What's wrong with heaven? Heaven, that's a place where you have temporary enjoyments of highest degree. And after that you have to return to this world because there'll be some imperfections and you'll <coughs> get some reactions. And after that, back to Berlin, back to Tokyo. No, not again. I've been there already. I know what it's like. I don't want to be there again. So really? So how was heaven? <coughs> yeah, it was pretty good. 
mangoes, size of elephant, they drop from the trees, you know, the mang mango rivulets, they're going all over, they just go and drink, and <coughs> women, just so beautiful, no divorce, I mean, incredible, they're having is something, you know, uh, you, did you suffer that? Well, I saw a few little sufferings. Like what? Well, one time, you know, I was king, the King Indra, 